Welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, I'm going to be unveiling the secrets of how I paint the basic weaponry for the great company of Frostpaws. Whoever you are and welcome to this little video of mine where I'm going to be painting the uh, well I'm going to be unveiling the secrets of how I how I paint the basic weaponry for for my Space Wolves army the great company of Frostpaws. So here in the frozen fortress uh, we just made a nice cup of tea over there Terran Gold and we're joined as always by my comrade and co-host Norwegian Troll Dimu so this is going to be nice we're here for another installment of pra painting the frost paws so I'm going to dive straight into the tutorial but I just very quickly want to explain what's going on here so painting the frost paws is a painting series where I unveil all the secrets, all the tips and tricks for painting the colour scheme of my Space Wolves army, the great company of frost paws. And what I do is, well I've got a model here, uh, this is Ragnar Blackmane, the young king. And uh, what I do with all these painting series is, is I like to take a real nice character model, really cool model, perhaps one that I wouldn't typically typically use in my armies uh, but one that I really fancied painting and what I do is I break down all the different aspects of painting the color scheme for my for my faction and um, and I show you it all on this single model so if you watch the series from start to finish you'll get to see Ragnar here painted from start to finish so we've already done the the Space Wolves power armor the group the blue gray armor with the the black fingers and knee pad of the frost paws and the nice and the nice brassy brassy ornate bits as well but in this episode I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint what I call the basic weaponry. So that's going to be, what do I mean by that? It's going to be bolt guns, chainsaws, but also every single model in the frost paws, they have, uh, they have one of these combat knives on them and, uh, and I paint them in a unique way. Uh, they have a black, black leather scabbard on them. Um, and like I said, you'll find that on every single model in the frost paws, ex except the little, the little Fenris and Wolves. Anyway, I digress. So... In this video I'm going to be painting the basic weaponry, so we're going to be painting frost fang on here. If you want to see how to paint, uh, how to paint some more special, t specialized space wolf weaponry, things like lightning claws, uh, fr frost blades, uh, thunder hammers, storm shields, I have done a separate painting series for that. It's called Winter Weather Weaponry, where I paint all of those kind of uh, weapons with a winter feature in their name, uh, a winter weathery feature in their name, and I, and I sort of imp paint them taking an inspiration from that weather feature as well so you can check that series out but in this episode we're going to be painting the basic weaponry so like i said we've got ragnar here we're going to put him aside for one second i'm going to show you what paints we're going to need it's quite a few uh so we first of all we've got lead but lead belcher from citadel and a, a lighter silver here rune fang steel now uh, you don't have to use these exact paints but i'm showing you the, the ones that i would use personally uh so Korax white for base here, Screamer pink as well, it's one of my favourite colours actually, really nice colour, that's going to be for things like F for handles and stuff like that. And then for the black scabbard combat knife we've got a bad and black here, uh, we're going to be using a little highlight of Eschen grey, and some other features we've got Mechanica standard grey here, as well as Dawn stone, and then a couple of washes, some known oil, and some Agrax Earthshade and, and those are all the paints that we're going to need so we're going to zoom in here get set up and, uh, and we'll get started so here we are we're going to get started here and the very first thing that I'm going to do is uh, fill in all the metal bits so we're going to bring out the the lead belcher here always important to give your paints a good shake and if you heard a clicking noise there that's because what I like to do is I've got these paint mixing balls here which is essentially just a little stainless steel ball bearing throw a couple of those into your pots and it really really helps with uh, keeping the paints nice and mixed nice and fluid so really highly recommend that so got a little citadel bait brush base brush here medium and I'm gonna apply a little bit of this paint onto my army painter wet palette there and gonna give a nice smooth coat to all these silver bits so I'm talking we can cover this all over the chainsaw all over the chainsaw so if you're painting chainsaws or if you're painting bolt pistols bolt guns I'd start with applying a nice layer of this silver all over it all over those bits just being careful to avoid avoid the bits we've already done 
on the, on the armor there. But yeah, just a nice smooth coat of silver all over that, and as well on the on the combat knives here, we on the handles put a layer of silver on them. And there we go. So I'm going to fill those in, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that's the base coat of lead belcher done. I've done a couple of layers, two, two thin coats, of course. And, and I've also picked out any, any chains, any little bits like that, any links that are connecting things like te teeth or bones or uh, rune stones to, to pieces of you know, leather cord or anything like that. So any chains, anything like that, anything that's supposed to be uh, silvery metal picked out with a lead belcher. So we've let that dry and the next thing we're going to do is give that a little wash of the null oil. There we are then, so that's the non oil open. You can see here I've got a little bit, just like a knob of blue tack under there, just to, just to sort of stick it down, hold it a little bit firmer. And I've also got these little little paint caps. This one's all covered in paint at the moment, but you get these that cover, go on the end of your paint brushes. That's just to hold the lid open so we can work with it from the pot like so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the brush up with some non oil. I'm gonna apply that all over these silver bits. Give them a nice, give them a nice shade, and just flooding it on, and then moving it around, getting it all nice and shaded. And you can really see how how the frost fang writing on the blade there really pops out, which is very nice. Get it all around those sort of like bolt there, all over the handle. a nice smooth coat of the layer of the wash all over that and then as it's drying I'm going to keep an eye on it making sure that there's no like big blobs that are pulling and drying look a little bit sort of clumpy or gross there we go and not also not forgetting the not forgetting the handle on the knife down there blots in a bit of that on there as well is really small but uh, it's good to get a little bit on there anyway like so I'll do covering the handle around the garden stuff there there we go so I'm gonna let that dry keep an eye on it as it does and we'll move on once it's done okay so the non oil wash seems to be nice and dry now so we're gonna go back to the Gonna go back to the lead belcher. We're gonna pick out some of the some of the silver again. So what we're doing with this is we're just just taking out uh, some of the some of the highlights again and some of the sharpest edges. So I'm gonna paint the teeth there. A little bit of that fresh silver back over there on the edges there, and pick out the little bolts that we've got there. But I'm not painting the whole thing again. Not picking out the uh, the recesses or anything like that. Just the main sort of body, but allowing it to be shaded, just to give it a bit of dimension. So there we go. I'm going to do that on like the teeth there, and the the guard on the handle here. Pick a little bit of that back out, and a little bit on the butt there, on the handle, like so. And you can see the difference already. Oh, that just gives it a bit more. A bit of that shine back while still having a nice sort of shaded edge and we we'll do that on the on the chains here just pick out the the main sort of links bodies of the chain just join a bit of paint on there like so again just to give that some dimension and the same on the handle pick out the bit of the handle just on the top there and a little bit on the edge and a bit on the guard there like I said, not repainting the whole thing, just just adding sort of a bit of silver back to it. Just to pick out the sort of the main body and the edges. So we're gonna leave that like that, let that dry, and then we'll move on. And once the lead belcher is dry, we're gonna highlight it once more, just with a uh, little bit of room fine steel here. So this is the this is the brighter the brighter silver there and we're going to use this on just the very just the very sharpest edges I got much left of this in the pot but uh, just take a little bit of that on the brush on the brush 
and like I said just the very sharpest edges so just the, the real real sharpest bits of the teeth I'm just gonna go this way on it just like so and back the other way I'm actually sort of following the, the angle of the teeth there and just giving it a little just a little bit just on the sharpest tips a bit on that one there around this side like so side that side cool and a little bit on that, that belt there and then we can do a little bit on the sharpest edges of the of the sort of the sword handle just a little bit there this is really just bits that you think the light is going to hit I'm going to do a little bit on this wolf here got a little bit on his fingers there I can always correct that in a little bit there and around the bottom of the handle here just a little bit there and these sort of ribbed effects there just a little bit on those and that is just just a small thing would be a bit sparing with it I'm just going to lift it up and give it another little layer of dimension a little bit around there there we go and again on the chains we can add just a little bit of this on them like so just to pick those out give them a bit more of a shine and any, any bolts or rings or anything like that that we've painted just a little tip of this on there as well like so and that's going to be it so that should be all the silvery bits done and so we'll move on so that's the silver done all the chains all the metal all the all the all the blades and stuff so things like that so next thing we're going to do i'm actually going to so i would do this for um bolt guns as well and storm bolters and things like that anything that's got um any piece of weaponry you know like the chainsaws and stuff that i've got a sort of casing on it so this um the blade has got like a sort of a casing here i paint all these with the with the corex white so we're going to crack the white open here and i've got just a little layer brush here and we're going to fill in all that casing like i said you'll find this on chain swords you'll find this on bolters things like that i'm going to paint all over this and I'm even going over the the writing there the frost fang bit just fill that in don't need to flood it too much but it should be come through a little bit darker with the with the wash but we are going to give it a white color just so it looks like one uniform piece so you can paint the paint the casing all around here on the blades and anything else and that should be it so like I said if you've got bolt guns and things like that any casing that you find on there uh, bolt pistols you know be a bit and um, choose, choose what you want to paint you can be sparing or you can paint rather a lot but it's entirely really up to your discretion but anything that looks like sort of a ceramite casing we're going to paint with the white so I'm going to fill those in and we'll come back okay so I've done two two coats of white on the on all the casing aspects of any weapons here so on frostbang here and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring out some agrax earth shade and just give this a little bit of a little bit of a shade so I'm still using my little layer brush here we're going to give this a little bit more of a subtle shade uh, what I'm going to do is just poke this just not overload the brush at all you can get this on a palette if you like it might help you see but I'm quite happy using it from the pot like so nice sharp tip and I'm just feeding this wash around any areas that I want to be a bit shaded so for example like this bolt sort of bolt on the end of his end of the chainsaw there just giving that a little bit of a little bit of a shade the brown is going to give it a slightly more sort of natural uh, slightly more you know natural buildup of dirt and residue perhaps there's a little bit of a there's like a little gem tucked in there which I haven't painted yet but I'm going to shade just around that just any 
features that you want to just pop out give a little bit of dimension to so for example where the where the blade joins joins the sort of handle down here I'm going to shade around there and if you go a bit heavy on this you can always always come back with a little bit of white it's probably a good idea to do that anyway just to just to neaten things up I'm going to put a little bit of that around the handle there and not forgetting the bolt around this side as well and what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this not loads and I'm going to feed it into the into the writing on the hand down the down the length of the blade there a bit that says frost fang and I'm just going to blot some of this into there not loads but just enough to pick out the the writing like so work a little bit of this on there and then what I'm going to do immediately is take a little bit of tissue and I'm going to wipe that away sort of the excess of it and it will look quite messy but what that's going to do is rubbing it along the top there it's just going to leave the, the wash in the details in the writing there like so and we're going to come back and neaten it up with a bit of white around the edges first but that's the idea and if you need to put a little bit more in there you can do that uh, and I'm going to do the same on the other side so I'm going to just flood some washing over the top like so until all those letters pop out nicely like that and then I'm going to take my tissue I'll brush down for a sec take my tissue and you could even do it with your finger, your thumb. Just wipe off the excess of that wash. And then we can come back afterwards and tidy it up with the white. Like so. And there we go. Okay, so the wash is now dry, so we're going to bring out the white again. And I'm just going to stick with my, my little layer brush here. It's got quite a nice tip on it. We're just going to be very sparing with this on the brush. Don't want to overload it, but uh, building up a nice, smooth, clean, clean, tidy up on the on the blade there. So I'm just going to very gently build this up, nice and smoothly, to to tidy up that washed area that we've done. So, like so, uh, we can go around the edge of the blade. Of the of the casing there at the top around that bolt without going all the way to the edge of the bolt leading it leaving it shaded around there but just like so and the letters we've been careful to make sure there's not too much on the brush so we're not running into those letter gaps but I'm just running the brush over the top of them just to pick out the casing around them Make that look a bit cleaner, a bit sharper, and it should leave a nice, nice bold look on those letters there. Now you could paint these to look uh, like glowing runes or something like that. And typically, if I was painting Ragnar for myself, I probably would. I probably would do something like that, but uh, I'm trying to show you how I would do things like change swords and bolt guns and stuff like that, and this is how I would do it for those weapons. Um, any any kind of details, things like that, um, or just the sort of general shape of the casing and things. I would typically shade it with the Agrax, and then tidy it up with the Corax white afterwards, like so. Now you can see maybe you can see one of these letters have actually run a little bit this white into there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse the brush out get it nice and clean and then just run the brush back into that try and fish that out and if it's a little bit stubborn if it's dried a bit too quickly we'll just come back and run a little bit of wash back into there so we'll probably come and do that in a minute and then again if we need to tidy up we'll just go back to the white well that's how we're going to do it Okay, so I've gone back with the Corax white and we've tidied up, tidied up the sword here and you can see the runes shaded in there. 
it's really important to make sure that the paint, uh, all the previous layers of paint going into those ruins were really nice and thin and uh, you're not overloading them. I feel like I might have lost a little bit of a little bit of definition on a couple of those ruins in places. Um, just being a little bit careless maybe with the thickness of the paint. So if you can avoid it, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely try. Um, but there we go. But they don't look bad. I think uh, I'm relatively happy with them. Just noticed a little bit right here to tidy up. There we go. So next thing we're going to do uh, with any kind of casing and things like this, what I like to do is add just a little, little bit of chipping effect to it just to take uh, a bit of that sort of clean cutness, clean cut feel away from it. And the way we do that is with a little bit of the, little bit of the, the lead belcher, silver. I've got a little bit still on the palette here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that, not overloading the brush at all. And I'm, I'm kind of twisting the brush to keep that fine point as I twist it with my fingers and running it along as, as I'm picking it up off the palette. And just trying to keep it on the point there. And the way, what we're going to do with this, we're just going to do little bits of take off little bit of little bits of the edge of that white just to give it a little bit of a chipped sort of battle worn feel and I am being sparing making sure that I'm not not applying too much here but I'm trying to also think about where this blade might get knocked so it's a little bit where the blade might get knocked and doing a little bit of this just sort of dotting it with the air uh, with the long edge of the bristles there and you could maybe do a little scratch a couple of scratches or some some dots maybe where it's been a bit it's taking a taking a bit of a scrape or a battering work it out in little clusters leaving some gaps maybe between bits and that's just taking the sort of clean cut edge of the edge of the white away basically giving it a little bit more of a warm feel but I don't want to go too mad there we go I'm gonna leave it at that but you can do a little bit of that as well just with a fine tip of the bristles just picking out some of the edges just adding a little bit of sort of marks and scrapes and scratches there we go but I'm gonna leave it there and we're gonna move on Okay, so we've got some good progress going on here and the very next thing we're going to do, we're going to start picking out some other features and we're going to work on the handles. So the handle of the sword here and the handle of the little knife there. And the colour I like to use is Scream of Pink for that. So we're going to crack this open. And I'm just using my layer brush here, taking a little bit of this. Paint's got a nice consistency so I'm going to take it straight from the pot. And any kind of fabric -y handles that we can see here any sort of cushions, cushioned handles they usually have a sort of a sort of a, what's the word, sort of a twisted effect in the way the fabric is woven perhaps but anything that looks like that we're going to pick out with the purple nice little spot colour I think and we're going to do the same on the knives these combat knives they have uh, the metal they have kind of the metal shaft on the back but round the front where the fingers would grip they've got this kind of same same fabric-y handle so we're gonna pick that out as well so I'm gonna neaten up those and fill those in so that's the scream of pink filled in on the handles lovely little spot color I think uh, we're gonna give it a shade now with the Agrax earth shade and we're just gonna like we would blob a bit of this onto those handles Don't need to go go crazy mad with this, but give it a nice coat. We got a little bit much on the brush there. Work that all around. That's going to help the dimension and the 3D-ness of the of the details on it pop. Just a little bit on there. Lovely. And we're going to use a little bit of that on on the knife handle as well down there. Not forgetting that. Just feed a little bit of that onto that and then we're going to leave those to dry nice and fully and then we'll move on there we are then and once the shade is all nice and done and it's darkened those down nice and lovely we're going to just uh, highlight them up again so if you can see 
then the the handle has a kind of woven woven shape woven design on it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to some Screamer Pink uh, you can lighten this up if you want but I feel like the difference is quite fine as it is so and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very carefully pick out that sort of woven shape without going into the sort of recesses and you'll see where they are so I've got an extra fine brush here and I'm not overloading the bristles at all and I'm just going to give that a little just a little coat on the woven shape like so this is a very subtle thing this you could skip it if you wanted to but I like doing it like so and then on the the handle of the of the knife down there it's got a similar thing it's got a ribbed effect on it so I'm just gonna pick out the sort of top lengths of those ribs very carefully with a very sharp tip just like that just to just to help it bring it out again and give it a little bit of a more of a three-dimensional feel there we are then so that's the handle of the sword and the handle of the blade on the uh, the handle of the knife rather uh, all done and that's going to be the sword finish so like I said if I was painting Ragnar for myself I, I'd probably do a little bit more maybe do some more work on this I might make those runes in the sword be all nice and shiny maybe do a little bit of the bronze armor on the sword here but I'm showing you how I would paint the basic sort of weaponry of the standard space wolf the basic chainsaw the bolt gun things like that and that's kind of the approach that I would do that's kind of all the work I would do some silver the white casing but chipping some shading and then any sort of handles or things like that give that nice little purple spot color to so that's what it's going to be uh, but now this is uh, Ragnar here is um, represented as the great company of frost paws so he's going to need his his knife painted so we're going to do that next so we're going to bring out a bad and black here for on the day that a member of the great company of frost paws earns their fingers they get awarded uh, we've not only been able to paint their fingers and knee pad in black but also with one of these knives so it's a very sp like I've said it is featured on every single model except the Fenrisian wolves uh, in my army so it's a very important feature so we're gonna paint this now we're gonna fill it in with a base coat of a bad and black and just paint that all over the casing all over this I call it a scabbard I don't know if a scabbard is supposed to be wood so I suppose it's a sheath really but, uh, if you know the answer to, answer to that, leave it down in the comments below. But here we go, we're going to paint all this in black. And leave it to dry. Okay, that's the Abad and Black all dry. Now, on these on these little knife sheaths, they do have these, these extra little, sort of little bits of... No, I don't know if it's casing or what to call it, but these kind of extra details here. There's kind of a, a raised bit on the bottom there. Uh, and a lifted up bit there kind of like an, a rimmed edge at the bottom there like an extra little bit of um, extra little bit of reinforcements on the on the tip down there and they've also got these kind of threads just in there that you can see these like threads holding the whole leather leather thing together and I actually picked those out in a different color and the color we use for that is going to be my stand, uh, Mechanica standard gray and I'm just going to take a little bit of this on the layer brush and pick out pick out those little details so you'll see them as they come out here so the bit on the bottom down there got this sort of shape going on like so I think I've actually made a little bit of a mess got it just in the edge there so I'm just gonna wet the brush dry it out just to lift that back out there like so just me correcting a little error and so I'm gonna paint all around the edge of that goes all the way around this is just going to make the knives uh, give it a little bit more more interest of color going on rather than just being pure black uh, so I'm going to do the edge on the sort of rim on the top there as well but not only that we are going to very carefully pick out those little bits of thread just one by one Just very gently letting the paint just sit onto those. 
without trying to without flooding them still want them to be nice and black all the way around but just a little bit of color to those and that's what it's going to look like just like that uh, so I'll finish this up let that dry and then we're going to give these a wash so those are the base colours on the knife sheath all done now. I told a, a wee bit of a lie, I said we were going to wash it next. We're not actually, we're going to highlight it and then we're going to apply a wash on top of the, on top of the lot of it. So we're going to use two colours for this. Uh, the black, the, the black black we're going to highlight with the Eschen Grey here. And the grey bits we're going to highlight with the Dawnstone Grey. So I'm going to crack these open. And for the black, take a, just a very small amount of this. Make sure you're not overloading the brush. We want the bristles nice and sharp. And I'm gonna run this down the gonna run this down the sharp edge of the of the sheath there. Just like that. Just a little bit, that's all we need. And I can run a little bit of this around around the sort of front edge as well just around those little bits of of threading just a little bit there and again that's all we need that's all we need just a little bit of a highlight just to sharpen up the black there very nice and then same thing with the dawnstone here I'm gonna use this to highlight the grey bits and again not overloading the brush making sure we've got a nice sharp tip and I'm just going to run that along the sharp edges here on there and a little bit around the base the bottom there like so on there just sort of outlining the shape of it really Maybe a little bit smidge too much there, that's okay. That's fine. And then a little bit on this edge up here. Just to give those a little bit more dimension. Like so. And maybe run a little bit around the edge down here. A little bit more down there. A little bit more on the top there. Not forgetting around the other sides as well. Bit there and we're going to very very carefully apply just even less of this onto those onto those threaded bits that we did earlier very subtly one two three oops missed it slightly there so I just grabbed another brush here wetted it slightly not too much just a little just to scrub that away Problem solved. Go back to here, back to there. And there we go. So that's all highlighted as well. And what we're going to do, once that's dried, now we're going to give it a little bit of a wash. And that's going to be the last thing we're going to do. We're going to bring out the Agrax Earthshade again. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to overload it, just a very, just a very subtle, thin, sort of little glaze of a wash going on here. Just a little bit, just to give that a slightly more natural, natural feel. Make it look like it's more sort of coloured leather, rather than, rather than painted, if that makes sense. So just a little bit of that. Just a thin layer of that brown wash to give it a subtle brown tinge. There we go. And if you feel like you've gone a bit heavy, you can rinse out your brush, just pull a little bit of it back up. Or if you really want to, fill in a little bit of paint again, go back with the greys or the black or whatever. But normally that's kind of just how I leave it, just a little bit of a wash on top there. On top of all the colours, all the highlights and stuff, gives it that nice natural tone. And there we go, just a subtle little thing. A little bit of that and there we go so I'm gonna let that dry and then we're all done here and there we go then so that's all the basic weaponry all finished on Ragnar here nothing too fancy but like I said this is kind of the approach that I would do to painting 
all the knives there and all the models, but also up here, this is the approach to that. We use the painting chainsaws, bolt guns, bolt pistols, storm bolts, anything like that. Sort of simple, basic, nothing fancy war gear for the great company of Frostport, Frostport. So, so there we go. Ragnar's coming along nicely. We've still got loads to do, but uh, making good progress. So there we go then. Well, and there we go then. So that was episode two of Painting the Frost Paws, where in this episode we took a little look at how, how I like to paint the basic weaponry for, for my Space Wolves army. So we've still got lots to do on Ragnar here, so keep a look out for some more episodes of Painting the Frost Paws. And if you didn't catch episode one, where I showed you how to paint the power armor, then uh, I hope you'll go and check that out as well. But uh, there we go. So if you have enjoyed the video today, then a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated and of course if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the frozen fortress then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber and once again whoever you are thank you very very much for joining me today i'm winter wizard that's dimu and for now keep it frosty <laughs>